Some historians have described this as a sort of loose sheet of sand, of sand without any real religious organization. And we are now discovering, historians looking at new material are now discovering that this was not the case at all. There was a huge uh, array of organization, but none of them was organized like a church on a national basis. And that's where they were mostly invisible for, for outsiders. Um, religion is tightly linked to local culture, local history, local pride, and local autonomy. Uh, so they were um, what we call ascriptive groups, that is, groups you have to adhere to, whether you like it or not, like lineages, uh, decent groups, all the people considering that they have a common ancestor and sacrificing to those ancestors. That was very strong. But also territorial groups, all people residing on a given territory, like a village or a neighborhood, had to contribute to the neighborhood or village temple. And it was very expensive, it was a strong commitment, and you have to, you really had to uh, take part in that, otherwise you were excluded from the community, from village life or neighborhood life. And there were also guilds, people working on the same trade or um, uh, coming from the same place of origin when they moved to the cities. They also had common religious activities, like a patron god that they uh, sacrificed to. And on top of that, you also had lots of um, what we could call congregations, people coming together out of their own individual will, um, which might mean a woman joining without her husband joining, which was not the case for uh, like ancestor cults or local territorial cults where all family members went together. And those congregations had lots of different activities like uh, doing pilgrimages. Chinese used to and still love to do pilgrimages on a rather large scale to sacred temples or sacred mountains. Or doing charity, uh, helping the poor or uh, giving away religious books, printing and, and giving religious books or um, building new temples. And uh, these uh, congregations used to cooperate, um, building alliances and doing things together, but still keeping their local autonomy, representing local people doing things together and not organizing on a national scale like church would. So that's why um, the, the Westerners who first came to China didn't recognize those kinds of activities as religious because they were not organized as a church separate from society and with its own uh, structures and leaders. But they were still a different form of uh, religious organization at the local level that, that uh, manipulated huge resources, I mean financial resources but also symbolical resources. They were the places that helped local leaders emerge and they were very important for uh, restructuring local society. Most of these structures were destroyed in the course of the 20th century, mostly because of the uh, uh, state building palaces of the successive regimes that uh, governed China during the 20th century. But we have been witnessing since the last two or three decades the renewal of those local structures that both uh, help people live together and give them meaning.